Hello, Carmen. Welcome to Empowered the Podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm glad it worked out for us to meet today and share everything you're doing in the world and that you've done in the world because you've written a lot of books and you're an astrologer and you're a healer and you're a therapist. And I want to have you share with us a little bit about you from the beginning, if you'd like, and what got you into all the things that you're doing, the astrology and the healing. Tell us where it all began. Yes. So it really started when I was 16 years old. I, I was always very intuitive and sensitive since I was young and I would dream and I would sleepwalk and I would just kind of have these feelings and experiences and and my parents would always say, it's just your imagination, you know, go back to sleep. And so one night and when I was in high school at 16, I woke up and there was a glowing ball of light in my doorway and it was about the size of a softball and it was translucent, you know, watery. And, and I, I closed my eyes, opened them. I know I was awake. And it was there and I couldn't scream and I couldn't move. It's like I had no voice and I laid there and all I had control of was my mind. So I kept saying, please don't have it come out of my room over and over praying. And it never did. And it was fear of the unknown. Now I would, I wish I would have walked over to this thing. Right. But at the time, you know, I didn't. And it's like, it finally released me at some point in the middle of the night. And I yelled out for my mother and she saw it too. And it was kind of the first time that she believed me, you know, with some of my uh, strange experiences. And she's like, there was a glowing ball. You know, she she was trying to rationalize it. Maybe it's a flashlight. Maybe it's a lighting, but I'm like, no, it's huge, you know. And she said, just go back to sleep. And the next morning, she's like, that was no lightning bug. And so she believed me and, and I felt like, okay, someone else saw something. And that kind of spurred my study of astrology that is when I started trying to figure out I want to learn more about why I am the way I am and I went into a little bookstore in St. Louis Missouri called Mystic Valley and I bought my first astrology book and it was about Virgo and I loved it and I just wanted to learn more about my personality because I love psychology and I was planning on you know doing that in college and I was a senior you know in high school so I started reading and doing my own chart learned how to do it back in those days we had to do it by hand because we didn't have computers. And so it was a lot of work. You had to have the ruler and calculate the longitude, latitude, look stuff up. I mean, it was like, you know, old school. And uh, I did that. And when I realized I had planets in the eighth and 12th houses, everything made sense of why I was so different than my family and, and my friends and why I have these mystical, unexplained experiences. And I was always born spiritual. And that's something that uh, 12th and 8th house people, people that have planets in those houses always share with me as well as Pisces and Scorpio people, because that's the same energy, you know, that rules those areas of life. And they are kind of born with a belief in, in something greater than themselves. And it's not so much religious, but it can be, but it's usually just belief that I'm a soul and there's a reason I'm here and just kind of born that way. And so astrology became my obsession and I taught myself how to do it. And at the age of 19, maybe 1920, I started doing consults and I would do it for fun on the, you know, with people in graduate school, I was getting my master's in social work and just started practicing and people wanted to pay me. They're like, this is really deep. And they said, this is better than therapy, you know, because it's very deep and very accurate. And it really just validates what you already know about yourself. And so it's really a personality tool and it's energy. And that's why it works. And I just, it became a tool that I've always used in my life. And I kind of became, I guess, an entrepreneur. You could say I started my own part-time business doing consultations, you know, did a website and I always had a normal job, you know, in the social work realm and worked a lot with children, teens, trauma survivors. That's been where my past 28 experiences have been and prevention of sexual assault and violence. So that's kind of what I do in my normal job, but I've always been an astrologer and taught it did workshops, you know, charts for people from all over the world. I started some Facebook groups and just kind of grew my followers and just helped people. It's a, you know, for free, everyone supports each other. It's kind of like support group. And I've always had, this as my side thing, but I've, I've always loved to write. 
And so for a while, I quit doing astrology consultations and I just focused on writing articles and, and then trying to write the books that I wrote. And that's kind of what I did for many years is just do uh, some self-publishing. You know, I published a few on my own and then I'm like, I really want to get a book published. And, and it was a lot of work and it took me many years, but I finally got a book published and now I got a couple published and I'm finally learning this whole publishing business and the world of writing. And that's kind of my passion now is to write about astrology on a basic level and to let people know that it's a tool for therapy, just like, you know, Myers-Briggs or Four Lenses or any of these other tools. It, and it's very deep and it works. And that's kind of how I ended up doing astrology all these years. Goodness. Okay. I have lots of questions. <laughs> yes. So because I just went to see Kyle Gray in Tampa and he talks to angels and he would say that was an angel that came to see you in the night when you were 16 right mm -hmm. is that what you mm -hmm. believe okay that ball of light I do believe that I this is the interesting part I didn't share I always uh, believed in angels and so I collected angel figurines my whole life I was obsessed with angels and I wasn't raised to be that way. You know, I wasn't raised Catholic. My parents really never went to church, but I went with my friends because I liked to go. And I was kind of really, I was Baptist really. And, but I loved uh, icons, you know, like Christian icons, you know, Greek icons and the angels and everyone knew to buy me an angel. So I told my mother, I think it was uh, an angel or a spirit guide. It was, it was not anything scary to be afraid yeah. of, right. but you know, it's 16 know. You're like, what is this? You know, and it was fear. And do and, you know what time it was in the night? Was it like in the middle of the night, like three? Yeah, eight? it was about maybe like one or two. Okay. Uh, it, you know, I'll never forget it because I had had a basketball game that night. I was a basketball player and I was a three point shooter and basketball was my life back then. Right. And I came home and we had had a great game and I was in a great mood. I mean, we won. I, I played well, you know, and I was just really having a good night. Came home, I was kind of riled up, you know, it's hard to go to sleep and laid down and kind of was on my way to sleep, maybe kind of woke up at some point and there it was. And I'll never forget, it was after the night of a big basketball game my senior year, yeah, that I saw it. And oh, nice. and it wasn't the only time that I saw uh, an orb, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. I had it happen, before, I had it happen after that um, and when I was playing basketball, actually. I saw three above the rim uh, when I was getting ready to shoot a three throw mm -hmm. and, and it was to win the game or lose the game. And it was to go to state championship. It was a pretty big deal. And, and I made them and I felt like I wasn't in my body. It's kind of like I was floating and I, and it just, everyone was screaming. The place was packed. There was police, right? My, I, I don't even know what happened, but I feel like it was angels or someone helping me. Let me just say, and it was one of the best nights of my life. That's really, incredible. one of the where, where was so, this Missouri? Yeah, this was actually Lebanon, Missouri, at the Lebanon okay. High School basketball gym. Uh, and then, when, yeah, and then you went on to the state champs. We went, we went on to play at, uh, and and we lost, but we went on for state uh, okay. to play, and we played like a Springfield, Missouri, like a really good team, and they they beat us, but but it was my senior year and and it was a big deal because my mother even had a strange feeling that night especially the way it all went down yeah um, it all was just amazing and uh i was on tv i got interviewed it's like everything all the hard work i had done i had struggled a little bit with things throughout basketball it all came came to head it's like that was like meant to be wow and, and i got recruited uh to play uh basketball uh, division three, you know, it wasn't like, you know, division one or anything, but I was a three point shooter and I could shoot way out. And that was my life. I mean, I lived at the basketball goal. And, you know, one of the things I, I always, it's kind of weird to say, but I think that what opened up my abilities or my intuition or whatever you call this was the hours and hours of concentration that I, I did shooting. Like I spent at my time at the basketball court every day and shooting hundreds of baskets. Are, and you, it's a tall? Lot of Are you tall, Carmen? Oh, well, I'm five, three. I'm oh. a little guard. Yeah. What, what, I what I was tall. Were that you, would have helped. Was it your dad who introduced you to basketball or what, what got no, you? No, my parents had no idea about basketball. I was raised to play softball and baseball. I was really good shortstop. My dad wanted me to do that. And I just, 
I like to do it for fun in the summer, but I didn't love it. I love the basketball. I just started, picked up a ball and started teaching myself. That's and I kind of, I started later. I think my Aries energy, you know, um, and I just naturally was athletic. You know, I could do all sports. I love sports, but basketball was the thing that I mastered with the shooting. You know, it was my, my big thing growing up. And then I got in college and I realized I'm never going to be six foot tall and play in the women's NBA. So how many books have you written? You you're an author and you've written like nine books, right? Yes, I've written nine books. My my two most recent, I would say my four most recent, Sun Signs, Houses, and Healing, Transform Your Life Through Astrology, Build Resilience, and then Moon Signs, Houses, and Healing just came out in May, and then Phoenixes and Angels, Mastering the Eighth and Twelfth Houses just came out July 1st, and so uh, those are my three most recent books, and and they are, yeah, and it's all new. You know, I'm doing shows, I'm writing, I'm doing workshops and just, you know, book signings, you know, learning how all of this works. And, and I love it. I love to, to write about astrology on a basic level. And so I got nine books that are out. And then I have a 10th book coming out next year that I wrote with a fellow astrologer, a friend, mentor of mine. So that'll come out next year. Exciting. So tell me the difference between human design and astrology, because the big thing everyone's talking about is human design. How would you describe the difference? Yeah, I think it's just a different way of laying it out. Because, you know, when I when I looked at my human design chart, you know, what human design is, it kind of explains the energy mm-hmm. and makes it more of an energetic kind of thing, right? Like an in, like you're a generator, a manifester, you know, it it, it puts labels on the same energy. Uh, that's in astrology. It, it just makes it a little bit simpler, I think, for counselors and and people to understand. But it's based. It's very astrological um, yeah. based. Yeah, and, yes. and, and yeah, it's really and, cool. Yeah, uh, it's all amazing to me. So yeah. you mentioned the eighth and twelfth houses, and then I know that I'm in the twelfth house, right? Because you did my chart, which I totally appreciate, and I was mm-hmm. reading it first. I started on my phone, and then I. Uh, did a little more. And then I was like, some of it really resonated and was very accurate. And then there was a little bit that wasn't exactly. So how do you like, tell us what the 12th house means, first of all, like, yes, the the 12th house is, let me explain this. It's a little bit easier to explain. So when, when we're born, if you're looking up at earth on the exact month, day, year, time, and place of your birth, all of the planets are in a certain star constellation, which are the 12 zodiac signs. And they're in a certain area of the sky, which we call houses. And each house rules an area of life and energy, right? Has an imprint. And so when you're born, it's like we take a picture of the sky and we put it on a piece of paper and and we make it into symbols. And so it's a wheel with 12 houses And you can see all the symbols of the planets and the signs and it's its own language. So, you know, you got to learn all that when you're studying astrology so you know what the symbols are. But what it is, is each house rules an area of life. So in the birth chart, the 12th house specifically is ruled by Pisces. And every house has a ruler, a sign that rules it in a planet. So it's ruled by Pisces and Neptune. And it's the house of, of the unconscious cosmic consciousness, spirituality, angels, mystical experiences, solitude, prayer, meditation. You know, it's the house of service to others. It's the house of sacrifice, loneliness, all of these things, right? And it's all kind of Pisces energy, creativity, mysticism, music, you know, anything that brings you peace and a connection with the higher power. And so having everyone has 12th house in their chart, you may just not have a planet there, But, you know, what we do is we look at what sign is on the 12th house cusp, and then we look at, do you have planets there? If you don't, it's not a bad thing. But if you do, it just means that you have some uh, karmic learning and and some issues related to that. And you typically have unexplained spiritual experiences. You're born with certain gifts, and it may be a lot of 12th house people dream. I think 99.9% of people that I've researched and studied all these years they have dreamed something that has happened. They dream it and the whole thing happens in the future and they can't explain it to anyone. Happened to me my whole life and I meet people from all over the world. So I know I'm not alone. It happened to me once. 
yeah. where I, yeah. sl- I, I literally, um, I dreamt that my girlfriend's father was going to pass away and the next day. Yeah. She, it happened. And, yeah. you know, she yeah. told me this is years and years ago, like 30 probably. And I didn't tell her right away till like years later, but I did tell her yeah. later. He had like a heart attack or something. And it was very disturbing that that happened, but it doesn't happen all the time. It's just weird. No, it you get you get a glimpse, and and I had the same thing with my grandmother. Came both my grandmothers came to me before they died, and I knew they were going to. And I've had a dream of my friend's sister passing away before it happened, and very, it's hard to explain. And mm-hmm. I used to hide it, and I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to scare people. Um, but now I, after many years, I, I practice like, what can I say to them just to kind of give them a heads up without telling them, right? Like just, are you doing okay? You know, and I'll kind of, and now a lot of people know I dream things because now I kind of share it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like I had a dream about you. If I feel really strong and it feels right, you know, like discernment, do I share it or not? If, if, if it says, yes, yeah, share it. If I feel that strongly, I'll share with someone I dream about you. And sometimes it's very serious things. Like I know their life's going to change or something major is going to happen. Um, because I'll dream about they're in a tornado or they die. Like, but change. Have, have you ever had the dream though, that something was going to happen and it didn't happen? Not, not the kind, there's but, two kinds of dreams. So though I always know when it's a special dream, when I wake up, because it feels so real. And I just know instantly the difference between a message and just a symbolic dream, you know, because there's just symbols within the dreams, but then those kind of dreams, I always know when I wake up that it's, that it's real, that's important. But yeah. you know what I, what I found out, I've never been able to prevent something because everything, there's a quote, nothing happens in, in the real world until it happens in a dream. There's a quote about well, that. That's true. And it's usually a positive thing. And it's usually like every single thing that's here, Apple computer, um, you know, that chair over there, everything started yeah. out in someone's mind. So it's kind of like if you have, if you did Disney world, you know, it started out in Walt Disney's mind. So <laughs> yeah. it's an imagination, but yeah, I mean, so that's, that's a positive way to look at it. Um, so I had a couple other things just kind of, noted down to ask but did you have more you wanted to say on that because it sounded like you did yeah just just it's I think it's important for everyone to write their dreams down and keep a dream log Mm -hmm. and and to know if you if you've had this happen that you're not alone uh you know it's very common actually and what it is it's like your soul's way of giving you a message and and preparing you for the future um or to be able to be strong for other people Cause I, you know, I often dream about other people that are in my circle that I'm not real close with. I mean, sometimes I dream about my family. I do, but it's people at work, people around me, even people that I don't really just acquaintances. I'll have a very vivid dream and I'll know they're going to, they're going to change their job or they're going to leave, you know, and it happens. And then people are like, you said that. And I'll like, I'll forget what I say, you know, but I'll dream it and I'll share it. And so I just, it's something that if I dream something, it's, I believe it. And I, I listen because it's like, it's coming but you're not, yeah, you're not a, you're not a reader. Like you're not, people don't come to you and say, tell me what's, you no. know, right. No. So who no. is your ideal client and tell us who you serve. So you still have your day job doing the yeah. social work, right? Yeah. But who's yes. your, you have a business besides the writing books. Tell us about your business that you offer today. Yeah, and my ideal bu- client is sure, sure. My business is called Deep Soul Divers Astrology and Consultation. And what I do is, you know, I bring counseling and coaching together with astrology. So I, I look at your chart, I look at your strengths, I look at your gifts, you know, your challenges, and I really try to help people focus on uh, number one, validating their their experiences validating, um, you know, what are good careers for them? What type of partners are best for them as far as compatibility, health, diet, you know, routine, all kinds of things I can help people with um, by just using their chart, you know, their birth chart, their base birth chart. And then it's like a counseling session. And really anyone that's interested in 
learning more about their astrology, their birth chart, or incorporating that can be a client of mine. You know, so I do workshops, groups, um, team buildings, you know, to help each other understand each other's uh, personalities in the office, um, you know, can make, it's very practical. I use it as a really practical tool. It's and it's not, you know, hocus pocus. I'm not doing tarot cards or nothing like that. You know, it's a science, just like um, Myers-Briggs, four lenses. I'm trained in all that as well. The personality um, theories. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've always been into astrology for years as a child. Like when I say that, I mean, I knew what an Aries is. Fire, I'm an Aries. My son yeah. is an Aries. I, you know, I always knew who I'm compatible with Leo and Sagittarians and, yeah. and then I go on a date and I'm always like, what's your sign? But I know that that's really not, it, it, there's so much more to it because it's yeah. the rising sign, the moon sign, right? Because just saying I'm an Aries is the sun sign, correct? Yes. The yeah. moon sign is just as important. And that's my newest book, moon signs, houses and healing. It's a, uh, let me show it to you. It's purple. It's um, it's all about the inner nature. So this is it. It's purple. And then the sun signs book. Uh, it's a good companion guide to start as a beginner because the sun sign, everyone kind of knows their sun sign. You're right. It's like your main personality and how you show the world. But the moon sign is your emotional nature. It's where you find comfort, emotional stability, where you find happiness and emotional fulfillment. And where you feel comfortable to express your emotions and feelings in your inner nature. And so we want to see what sign is the moon in when you're born and what house is it in. And the, the thing about the moon sign, it's, it moves through the sky every two to three days in, 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 in astronomy. So every two to three days, it's changing signs. So, you know, right now we're in a Capricorn full moon. And there's a full moon weekend. Uh, we were feeling it for the last couple of days. So it's a very, uh, it's a buck moon. It's a super moon, which means that that energy affects our emotions, our inner self um, greatly because the moon affects the tides of the ocean. It affects us my, too. Yeah, you're amazing. Uh, I'm going to look up my moon real fast while I'm talking. Yeah, what's your moon? It, yeah, it, in, the, in the moon sign book, it's Virgo. really cool because. Virgo. Oh, you're Virgo. See, we're sun, moon, flip. I'm Virgo sun, you're Virgo moon, you're oh, Aries sun, I'm Aries moon. We're like mirrors. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, I was thinking if I got one of your books, am I going to understand if I'm new? Yes. Like, am, it, it, like it, so your book is for the person who doesn't know anything except. Yes. For, okay. That's and for it. people that know a little bit. I mean, because like a I bit. write in a very basic practical way. So in the whole introduction, I talk about what are, what's a birth chart? What are the signs? What are the symbols? You know, it's, it's very basic. And then each chapter is dedicated to each moon sign. That's and I tell, I tell you your strengths, tips for healing, what you value, what your uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs are for your moon sign, your symbol. And then I just go into detail how you find comfort, um, emotional happiness, how you transform, how you can heal. And then I give self-care tips and prompts in both the sun sign and moon sign book. Everyone that's read it has told me, I never understood astrology until I read your book. And I've, I've heard that from a lot of uh, people that have interviewed me because it, because most astrology books are very complex and confusing because it's a lot of math. It's a lot of, you know, mine are like, you got to read it to know, but my yeah, son's I'm gonna go. I love hanging I, out in the bookstore. I just, I just love the bookstore. I'm going to, I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy one of your books, at least you. one. You're welcome. No. And um, so it's all fascinating. It's, it's so cool. I love all of it. So um, do you have a designated space that you write in? I just, that was something I wrote down because I know there's people who want to write a book but they just, you know, they're not for different reasons, but like, do you have like a designated space? And then I want to ask you what your personal spiritual practice is daily, like your routine, your morning routine, your evening, like, I'd love to hear what you do yeah. to nurture, you know, that, but go ahead and tell me um, about that. Well, it's, it's interesting because for me, I wrote, I actually wrote the sun signs book on Christmas break a couple of years ago when I was on leave for my normal job. I literally, what I did was 
I sat down in my, I have a special room in my house. Everywhere we live, I have my own little room. It's like my office, <laughs> but I have my spiritual stuff around here, you know, my angels and, and my chair. And this is where I come to meditate and relax. And, and what I use, I'm trained in what's called the Akashic Records. So Edgar Casey, I've studied his work a lot uh, since I was 19. And so I got trained in level uh, two of Akashic Records, which is you know, opening up your, your own records, the soul, where all soul knowledge and energy is. And when you do that, you know, you're awake and you do a lot of writing and that's how I was trained. And so when I open up my records with a special uh, prayer, I just start asking questions and I just write, and it's kind of like, it just flows. And that's how I wrote these two books. They just flowed. And, and I just wrote my own, uh, feelings about each sign, their traits, just people I've known and in a very basic way. And then I type everything up later. So I handwrite everything first because that's how I can write. So when I get writer's block, I can't just get on a laptop and type. I have to get a pen and piece of paper and I have to really and do the physical writing with my hand, which my hand will hurt because, you know, we're not used to writing like that anymore. Everybody is typing all the time. So that is how I write my books by hand first. And wow. if I'm stuck, like, okay, how does a Capricorn heal? How does an Aries heal? I'll just start writing and in handwriting and then it flows. And then I'm like, ah, that's how I'm going to write these books is by handwriting. And so that's what I do. Yeah. That's, that's how incredible. I wrote. Oh, ah, okay. So that's incredible. And then, then it, then it gets transferred to then what yeah. you send it in that way or you transfer it on I handwrite it and then I type everything up and then I do multiple edits That's and I'll step away and it's a lot of work uh writing a book it, it it took a it takes what I'm learning it takes about a year and then for your book to publish and get in the systems you have to wait 10 months before it even publishes once you turn the final draft in that's just how the publishing world works it's like delayed so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you have to wait almost a year for it to even go live so it's a process but um the editing I find if I step away from it you know because often you know I'm a Virgo so I notice all the details and all the errors you would think but it's amazing how many edits you do and you still find an error when you print it out and start reading it <laughs> like, oh, oh my wow. gosh. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy yeah <laughs> so what has inspired you to write books um geez um I've always loved to write. Oh, and yeah. I, That's your even, even when I was in high school, I loved English and I loved writing papers in college. You know, I always loved that. Um, but I love, I'm very imaginative. Um, I'm not, you know, like professionally trained to write. Uh, I just, I like to just write very practically what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, what I've experienced. And, and so. Um, Share your work with the world. Yeah, I love to, I love to write. And I, and I say that it's my chart because. It is, I, I, you know, Virgo, I have a lot of Virgo. Virgos typically um, like to write. They like to teach. They like to communicate. That's definitely me. And then I have the North Node in, in the third house, which is publishing, writing, radio, uh, all these things, teaching people things on a basic level, which is what I'm doing. I'm bringing a higher knowledge astrology down on a very simple level so anyone can understand it. And that's what I want to do because I mean, I don't really talk to a lot of astrologers and do charts for them. I do charts for people that have never had their chart done before, because um, that's what I want to do is open up minds and to show them, you know, what a powerful tool it is. And it just validates what they already knew, but it also gives them a sense of destiny because there, it is destiny. You know, the chart is the map of our soul and why we came here. And so my North Node is to write. And I thought I'm never going to get a book published. I mean, I, I tried many years and it takes a long time to for a door to open and I believe it's timing I mean I'm 47 I've been writing I self-published my first book in 2010 I mean and then you know I did that on my own but I couldn't get a publisher and then I finally finally did it you know you just can't give up you got to just keep not old lady I'm 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 older than you quite a bit that's all right you're not <laughs> old so when you said you're an old lady I'm like no no you're not um <laughs> Okay. So that's incredible. I love talking to you and hearing about all this, um, the writing and, you know, it's incredible. Um, so tell us, do you have spiritual, do you follow any 
Do you listen to any podcasts? Do you follow? Is there anyone, Wayne Dyer? I mean, is there anybody that you yeah. like and follow that you, an author or a spiritual leader? Um, well, I'd like, I love Deepak Chopra. I love Wayne Dyer, uh, Louise Hay, you know, Louise uh, Hay. I love Edgar Casey's work, um, Dolores Cannon, you know, the quantum healing hypnosis technique. I just got trained in that, you know, I'm always wanting to learn something new. I, I, I'm a Reiki master. I've taken, you know, pranic healing classes. You know, I'm always trying to learn different things, different tools. To um, help heal people, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, I believe astrology can help us heal, transform and build resilience. And it does because it helped that me do that. And I've seen it do that in the lives of others when they understand themselves and why they are the way they are. It's their, it's their soul. It's their birth chart. And then why others are the way they are. And then we, we accept people and we know, okay, they're not, they can't help. They're not doing it purposely. This is their personality <laughs> and we just have to adapt and, and learn, you know, how people are. Yeah. But so here's the thing that I'd like you to, dis the distinction and sure. differentiate is like, yes, I believe all the things I totally believe the soul design and everything, but what about life experiences and our environment and our parents and all the energies around us like doesn't that affect somebody as well it does it, it's a little bit of both that's a good question a lot of your family um, situation your childhood can be seen in the chart your marriage the kind of partners can be seen in the chart so if there's something kind of negative you know which happens in charts sometimes um, there's always a positive to it, but some things are destined to happen. Some things can be changed because once you know your chart, you can start changing your thoughts, which affect, you know, change your world and manifest the law of manifestation. All of the spiritual laws definitely are impacting us, but the birth chart, I don't, I can't say why, but it matches what is in your record, in your soul record. It's like a, a mirror. So there's some things we kind of chose to go through when we came here right? and we chose our parents and we chose our partners. And it's, okay. I believe that we've lived other lives. So everyone we interact with, we've known before in some way, and, and we're, we're learning to forgive and, and go through the, the school of life. You know, it's like a, a movie mm -hmm. and, and we're replaying things out. And sometimes we just have to, you know, go through these experiences that can be painful sometimes. And it makes us stronger because it's how we learn. And, and I never really believed that, but I do now because I'm like, you know, if I wouldn't have went through all the things I went through, I would never be who I am today. And I wouldn't change it now. But, you know, when you're going through hard times, you're like, why is this happening to me? You know, and, and I always believe there's a reason. So having faith in, in a belief in a, in a higher power that there's a purpose, um, even if you're struggling, there, there's a, there's a deeper reason sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do things to ourselves um, by negative thinking and, you know, getting into anger and not healing ourselves can manifest different illnesses. You know, a lot of those things can be healed when we change our thoughts and our mind and, and the mind body connection. Right. And so do you have a personal like are you can someone hire you to coach? heal them, do the chart, all the things on one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. You do have yeah, that. Okay. I do. I do one -on -one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's on my website's Carmen Turner shot.com. Okay. I'm also on Facebook, uh, deep soul divers, astrology, and then awesome. Carmen Turner shot. Yeah. And I'll put and, all your links in the show notes for sure. But okay. uh, so people can hire you. What does something like that cost? Just curious. Yeah. Um, it just depends. Like some people, like for an hour session, it's like around 150 okay. for uh, two, like 90 minutes. It's like about 200. And then if I do like a class, it varies depending on, you know, what kind of workshop someone wants. Okay. Uh, but, but the I'm class is the class. So you're saying like, you know, if, if, if I had a group of women and I wanted to bring you on as a class, or do you actually have classes that you invite people to join and you pay for the, the workshop or the class? I do both. I do okay. both. I do parties, groups for, uh, you know, like, uh, the, like astrological societies and colleges ask me to do things sometimes. So I'm creating something right now about astrology publishing, you know, my lessons learned, I'm going to present that in August, 
you know, I do a class on my own on the eighth and twelfth house, astrology one hundred and one. But if anyone wants me to create a course, I can come to you too and present. I've done for the ARE. I used to do e groups. I did in person, uh, you know, two two day programs. You know, where I teach the basics of astrology to everyone, just like a whole two days uh, from the beginning. Like, what's the planets? What's the signs? What's it all mean? And the basics. Tell life. Tell me what a typical day in your life is. Oh my gosh. Well, lately. Uh, since COVID, everything, everything, you know, kind of changed, but, you know, I work, I, you know, I work from home uh, with my normal job. I'm a, I'm on a remote deal and, um, and I go in once in a while when I need to, but, um, and then when I'm done working, I have my little puppy, my mini golden doodle, who's like my child. I have a, an 18 year old getting ready to go to college uh, next month in five weeks, moving out. I'll have empty nest, uh, just yeah. uh, one child. So that's a big change coming. Uh, so I pretty much get up, walk my dog, get my breakfast, work. I'm on the phone, on the computer all day, helping people. Um, you know, uh, it's, I'm constantly on the phone, constantly on the computer. And as soon as I'm off work, um, I'm on the computer doing my astrology, spiritual stuff, typing, writing, watching TV, cuddling with my dog, you know, talk, eating uh, dinner. And I'm on the computer a lot. I am, I'm constantly uh, doing something. I like to keep busy and I feel like, oh my gosh, there's just not enough time in the day. You know, I'm like, I'm going to bed at midnight and I'm on the laptop still. Right. And I'm like, oh, I'm just excited to do all these things, but there's just not enough time. But time management is uh, the thing, just managing my time. Cause I need time for self-care. That's a big thing in my books. Yeah. I, I want to hear what your personal self-care practices and is your one child, a boy or girl? she's a girl yes okay, a girl I have one child too he's he's an adult man and a wonderful person anyway so and what's the name of the dog because I have a dog too yes Rosie <laughs> I have lucky lucky, oh, lucky. lucky. About sleeping or something yeah. um, sleep right on the floor down here she's yeah. doing good <laughs> awesome so you're not married I am I've been married for we just had our 24th anniversary. Oh, oh, awesome. You left him out of your day. Your schedule. I left him out. Yeah. He, I, it's kind of funny. I met, I met him. Uh, it was a blind date. I was 23 years old and I only met him because he had the same birthday as me. Yep. And my friend, uh, right, next. yeah, I, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> you yeah, just, I yeah, I, I knew that. that that's my dog's birthday. August Is it really? Next? That's oh, mine, my beautiful. birthday. Yep. That's my lucky's birthday. That's a, nice. That's you that was, a okay. <laughs> before I forget, because it just, I'm sorry, I have to say this before it's going to go right out. Numbers. Tell me, do you, my son talks about numbers. I know the angel mm -hmm. numbers, 333, 444, 222, a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff comes to me all the time. My question mm -hmm. to you is like the life path number. Do you believe in that stuff? I think I do. I, I, it's a whole, you could spend your whole lifetime studying astrology too, because there's all these different types and kinds and medical and I mean, and specialty charts. And I, that's why I love it. I'm always learning something and numerology. I've read a lot of books on that and it is connected to astrology. The, the energy is very much the same. Um, and I do, I, you know, I have books on it, but I'm not like a specialist in it, but okay. I do know a lady that has a really cool show called um I got your number and I went on her radio show and she's a numerology person and she just knows the numbers and and she'll say something I'm like well that's in the chart because it's it's mirrors it's a common energy the numbers in the chart oh my god your birthday August 20th I, it didn't click until I put the numbers down 826 that's lucky that's funny. he's my angel divine angel oh, like yes. he's my rescue he's my like oh my oh. god He's truly a rescue. Anyway, okay. So, what's the dog's name? Rosie. Rosie and yes. Daughter is going off to college, and we we're talking about your spiritual practice and your daily self care. What you personally do to take care of you, to decompress, to you know, detox from social media, whatever, whatever. Or yeah, I cuddle. I would say every morning I you know try to do you know uh, mindfulness and and breathing okay. and. And just get centered, do meditation and then spend, you know, walk my dog, spend time taking care of her. You know, that's a big part of my routine is taking care of my, my pup. You know, she's been really sick for the past two years with different uh, allergies and things. And it's just, it's like, a, it's like having a sick child. So I've been really a caretaker to my babe, my pup. How old is she? And is she she's doing gonna, that? She's going to be seven, July 19th. 
and uh, she's she just you know we're getting to the bottom of it, but it's been uh, constant vet appointments and doctor appointments. I'm I'm driving like an hour and a half to, to a specialist now for, and she's been on antibiotics for four weeks because of a staph infection rash, uh, just really sensitive skin you know because she doesn't shed she's a hyperallergenic dog you know that that mix but but I take care of her get her fed I kind of have my routine get my 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 tea and work and then um at the end of night you know walk um and try to just watch shows that are funny you know watch shows I like to kind of veg out you know get off the computer get off because I work a lot a lot with serious things you know I work a lot with trauma victim trauma issues and I don't know how you do that yeah. yeah, it's hard, and and you have to self you have to self care. And for me, I love to watch uh, different series and shows. Like, um, you know, I just finished watching Succession. I love that show. It's probably one of my favorites on HBO Max. I'm watching. Uh, you know, I watch The Big Bang Theory to have a good laugh. My husband and I watch it when he gets home from work, and like you know, just to me, kind of veg out. And and then yeah, I don't have cable, but Succession. I'm gonna look into that. Oh, you, I love it. You would love it as an Aries. Yeah, you probably like it. It's kind of, to me, it has Aries energy and I don't know. I just like it. Yeah, yeah. No, I have, I have Prime and I have Netflix. I'm not a huge TV person. I read my books. I meditate. I take the dog to the dog park. Okay, so you watch Big Bang. You watch Succession. And what else were you saying? I'm sorry. And I just like to cuddle with my pup on my lap at night with a nice cozy blanket and, and just, you know, watch some shows, read, you know, catch up with emails, catch up with uh, doing charts because, uh, building my website, you know, I'm always got something on my to-do list that that is a, a part of my hobby, you know, my side thing. I love that because you're you're doing your passion work and you found it at a young age and you're you enjoy what you do. So even though there's not that much time in the day, or it seems that way because time's an illusion, but yeah. like you are loving what you're doing, so it doesn't really feel like work, and you it, get time. Yeah it's away from you because you're enjoying it does it that flies by when I'm doing this stuff it flies by right it's like I love well, that yeah. oh. and then when you, yeah the question came to mind when you were talking about studying astrology because of the angel you know seeing the orb and all this stuff like what made you choose astrology and not just spirituality or like how did you know to look at astrology specifically well, I, I, it was, it was chance. It was destiny. It was luck. I mean, I, I was always very uh, spiritual and, and I used to be, I would say religious, you know, I'm, I consider myself a Christian mystic. And then I, you know, of course I, I minored in philosophy and different religions. I, you know, study Buddhism, Hinduism, um, uh, you know, new Testament, old Testament, all that. Uh, I love that. And what really got me looking into astrology, I, it was a little bit of luck and also there's verses in the Bible that have to do with astrology. Astrology is in the Bible. Mm. And, and I knew that. And I wondered, why does it say that, you know, about the stars? You know, Jesus said, uh, uh, there'll be signs in the sun, moon, and stars when I return. And all these astrological symbols. So mm. I wrote a little Kindle book based on a series of articles I wrote for about.com when they were around about being a Christian astrologer. They were interested in that and wanted me to share some articles, which yeah. I put in the Kindle book. Yeah, a lot of the Christian people like like they don't believe in it. In fact, the Jewish. So I was raised. I didn't really have religion. My dad chose to be an atheist, and uh, my mother they, that side was from Russia, and I I just had we had a Christmas tree, and you know. Anyway, yeah. I learned about Judaism before my son was born. Anyway, but my question, and now I'm just spiritual, and I do like candles on Friday night. My yeah. question to you is so. Christians like I know a lot of my friends that have been Christian like they don't believe or even the Jews I know that if you get a reading it's like you're not supposed to or there's something really yeah there's different theories I feel like uh the Catholic Catholicism people that are Catholic are more open this is on some research I did um, that they do believe in astrology and they believe in past lives like a high percentage of Catholics do because Catholics, I find, are a little bit more open, more of when open minded. And so at one point, even after I got my first book, I almost converted to Catholicism and I almost became a nun. And yeah, and I don't tell I, I share it on once in a while, but um, I, I had all I really thought I'm supposed to be a nun. I love the Catholic Church when I went. 
And it was very different than, you know, well, how the I, angel came to you, like the angels are coming to you at a young age. So you probably I felt like it. maybe this is the calling that you're supposed to like serve God or. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I got, I have a really cool story. I used to, I had all these um, nuns, orders of nuns send me their brochures. And I was going to a Catholic college at the time, Fontbonne College in St. Louis, which was founded by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet, who came from France to found it. It used to be all, all girls school. And I lived in the dorm there and, uh, and I was getting these orders of nuns and I got this pack and the picture on the front of it was black and white and it was of a nun. And when I saw her face, it's like, I knew her and I can know, I got chills. I'm like, I know this person. How would I know her? I don't know her. I've never, you know, I wasn't even Catholic. I knew her. I didn't know the saints. I didn't know anything about that. That's why there was something in me that was, that had this in me before this Catholic. So uh, maybe you were a nun in another life. Yes. That's what I feel because why on earth was I going down that road? Right. So I, I, I saw her face and years later, um, it's pretty amazing. When I got married, my husband, uh, we moved overseas because he was in the in the military. Well, wait a minute. You didn't tell us why you chose not to go that route. Oh, yeah. Well, I wanted wanted to have um, husband, I wanted okay. to have kids and I wanted to, you know, get married someday. I thought and then I thought, no, that's just not me. I, I mean, I love and I went into social. I wanted to help people and I love that and helping children and everything. Um, but I thought, yeah, it just didn't feel right, you know, eventually. Um, but I always thought about it, you know, I thought, well, I could have done that. And then maybe when I'm older and I'm alone someday, you know, you know, who knows what the world, what the life will show, but I've always been drawn to that. And a lot of 12th house people are, they, they think about joining the clergy, being a, a rabbi, priest, monk, monk, you know, nun. I mean, it's very common because uh, they're born that way. So part of it's my chart, the interest in it and angels and, and all these spiritual icons. Like I've always collected them, like, especially, uh, you know, from Greece. And I love the different icons and oh, I, cool. I love them now too. I love angels. And do you know who Kyle Gray is? I've heard of him. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. So I saw him like, like, I just love him. Like I want to be his friend. Like someday yeah. when I'm famous, I'm going to be friends with this guy. Like <laughs> nice. his energy, his essence, he's adorable, dude. Nice. He's adorable. You got to follow him on Instagram. <laughs> you got to follow Kyle Gray. So he okay. showed up um, in Tampa. I just got to tell this quick story and he's standing on stage and he goes, he, he knew Louise Hay because, you know, yeah. Hay was publishing. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I remember my first, one of my first speech, you know, talking and Louise is like, she gave him some advice to make him like calm him down. And I forgot the advice now, but he says that every time he comes, cause he lives in the UK or he lives in Ireland. I forget where he lives overseas. He's like, when I come to the U S I'm always nervous because you know, they're going to ask me and customs, what are you doing here? And they interrogate you. And this time he says, I just told them, you know, I talked to angels and I'm coming to speak on stage. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, oh that's great. Oh, yeah. that's and they were really nice to him. And he was like, and I just loved, I loved it. And he's just hundred percent authentic and beautiful. And he, like you, that's why you got to look into him. Like you at a very young age, he started yeah. seeing things and hearing things. And, you know, yeah. he's, he's definitely one of those empaths and intuitives and all these things. And, um, but anyway, um, back to, yeah, I get excited about it. Um, yeah because it's just cool. And, you know, if, if I went back in time, like when I was a young, like second grade, I wanted to be a teacher and like, I, I didn't, I, my path wasn't ideal and I healed a lot and a lot happened to me, trauma and trouble, yeah. a lot happened, but I was going back to school part-time for, for teaching and then victim mindset, because I've healed and grown so much. My victim mm -hmm. mindset was like, oh, you're too old. Why are they going to hire you? You mm -hmm. you know, they're going to hire someone in their 20s. So I switched to social work. This oh, is okay. in like 2009, 10. Oh. And I got physically, I got very ill. Mm -hmm. And I ended up battling Lyme disease for four years. Um, oh. I was misdiagnosed multiple times by doctors. They all told me I had fibromyalgia. It's a whole story. Oh my! If you any of my podcasts, you'll hear the story. But ultimately, I knew intuitively that wasn't it. Took myself to a rheumatologist. Anyway, discovered what it was. Healed myself. Four years struggles. Financial, you know, 
I did wow. everything spiritual, medicinal, yes. herbal, everything. The point is, um, I bring it up because I was trying to do social work to help the young people because I had my own. And now I'm going to, I'm doing big brothers, big sisters. I'm going to mentor someone and I'm yes. super, super excited. And, but I love young people. And I was reading that in my chart that I like young people. And it's cool to like, see it in black and white that like, oh, yeah. I'm not just whatever. Cause I have a youthful energy about me. You do. And, Aries. Yeah. Thank you. And like so many people, and I don't know, is that cause I didn't really have a childhood from teenage years. I was always out partying and trying to find um, something. I don't know what trying to find <laughs> because I, yeah. So, but anyway, um, where was I going? I was basically saying like, when you talked about teaching and helping and children and all that, like that resonates with me because mm -hmm. if I had a different upbringing, I probably would have been a teacher. And that's why being a coach, a teaching, you know, teaching spirituality, teaching all this that I love, I love to talk about, yeah. it comes very natural, you yeah. know? Yeah. So the real estate I fell into, it was never a passion. And now I'm like going to coach realtors and, you know, right. real estate is a stress. Like I am anti-stress person. <laughs> like yeah. this is, I'm very self-aware just FYI. I don't know if that's in my chart, but basically self-awareness, very powerful. Yes. When yes. that's the first part of healing is to notice, to know there's something, right? Exactly. That, yeah. So anyway, but, um, so tell us what else would you like to share about your services, about your books, about, are all the books available at the bookstore or Amazon or. Yeah. Us... yeah they're, they're both on amazon.com. Yeah. Sun science houses and science houses healing. They're, they're beginners got, you know, start with the sun sign, then the moon sign. And I promise it'll be, it'll all make sense. Life changing, life changing right? And you can look up each of your, your friends, your family, you know, once you, and, and I teach you how to, how to figure out who's, who's what sign, who's what moon sign. And then you can look at your friends and family. You can read all about yourself and others and learn uh, different skills and tips and techniques. And it's just a fun, you know, basic, uh, how, you know, guide how to do your own chart, you know, online, how to look up everything. What are all, what are all those symbols? What do they mean? You know, and then how do you, um, how do you heal, transform and become more resilient? Because, and how do you self-care? Because every, every sun sign and moon sign is going to self-care in a different way. So, you know, for instance, you're, you're an Aries sun, Virgo moon, Aries suns usually heal and do self-care. They need, they need activity. So you like to be outdoors or exercising, sweating, you know, doing something competitive, you know, pushing yourself, uh, something physical, um, socializing, moving around. That's Aries. You know, it's hard for for them just to sit and and meditate for two hours straight. Okay, for self care. Oh yeah. That, that it's 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 going to be challenging because we know when you look up normal self care, it's like mindfulness, meditation, just chill to some wow. music, right? <laughs> and the fire signs are so physically active and have such a high energy it's hard for them to do that and feel feel comfortable so I give tips um I find the fire signs need more activity more action-based self-care and then like the water signs are the traditional can sit and, and be alone and listen to music and meditate right and do yoga you know and all that and then the earth signs uh they tend to you know be able to they like to be doing something being productive and so they can, they can meditate and do these self-care things for a little while, but they probably need to organize or straighten something up clean. You know, there's things they do for self-care that make them feel good. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the air yeah. signs are, are kind of like fire signs. They're, they're restless and they, they need mental stimulation to self-care. So they like to talk and socialize where you would think that's opposite of self-care, but that makes them feel good. Be talking to their friends or sharing things. All about feeling good. Yeah, yeah. Feeling good. Like, why are we here? Like, what is your belief why we're here? It's a I heavy believe, question, but tell me. Yeah. Well, shoot. I know that has changed through the years. I would say at this moment in time, I believe that we're here uh, to learn and grow and to learn to forgive ourselves and others and to realize there's a reason we're here and to connect with the higher power. We're not here just to work, eat, sleep, get up, work, eat, sleep, get up. 
and 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 where it's like we have to snap we have to come out of that uh, mentality Program. and I think we're here to help other people some of us are here to help other people open their minds too and support each other and I and I feel like there's so much negativity and confusion and, and judgmentalness especially uh you know with astrology and all these spiritual things that people just don't understand and then when they start, you know, open up their mind and realizing, you know, like astrology is in the Bible. I mean, I could, I have a whole class I could teach on it and, and I see it in churches, the astrological symbols are in, in Catholic churches throughout the world. I mean, that gave me hope. You know what? There's more to the Bible. There's more to religion than we know. And I love it. Oh, I'm so glad we're doing this and bringing this attention to everybody because there are people that will say they don't believe in it and. And they don't have to, you know, they, they may not be meant to uh, be an astrologer or be a healer or Reiki master or anything like that. Right, but I'll ask someone like, I'm yeah. going to be, you know, and they'll say, oh, I don't believe in that. It's like, well, I do. And, you know, cause it all, it, it makes sense. You know, I'm an Aries, my son's an Aries. He yeah. happens to be a manifester. I'm a manifester. I am mean, now he has fire, fire, fire. I think his moon sign is Aries as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He plays hockey. He's high energy. Oh but yeah. I tell you like when I do my boxing or I walk, if I walk the dog twice a day, three days, that's not enough. Like I absolutely need to activity. Weights. I need to do so much. Um, yeah, but, they're the athlete. Your Aries are the athlete. They're the, they're the, um, you know, courageous, motivators you're good at motivating people you're self-motivated you're self-reliant you're independent you're strong you know aries are are the warrior the warrior princess you know what i mean aries are and and just very they bounce back quickly from from change because you're ruled by mars so aries like things quick and fast they like action and so exactly. your virgo moon might kind of make you uh, overanalyze things a bit, you know, cause Virgos are overthinkers and worriers. So emotionally that kind of tames your Aries, right. Kind of yeah. makes you, you know, cause Aries, like I'm in page, I have an Aries moon. So the moon sign is your reactions. So my reaction is to be Aries. And I'm like, I don't want to wait. I don't, I want action. I want, let's make a decision. I go yeah. on my gut. I go on my gut. <laughs> yeah, I don't, follow your inner guide. Yeah. And, and yeah. intuition. And, you know, Louise Hay's work, we mentioned Louise Hay earlier, like she, her, she, her first books, love yourself, heal your life and heal your, heal yourself books, um, were probably the most significant books that helped me initially because yeah. of what she overcame and just her prayers and all the things and just sh shifting your mindset, just changing your whole mindset, you know, and it's a, it's a work, you have to keep doing it. But, um, there was something else that came to mind um, with the Louise Hay and oh Sonia Cachat. Do you know who Sonia Cachat is? She's uh, an author. I've heard of her. Yeah. Okay, she's a spiritual author, yeah. and she's written a lot of books. And anyway, listening to her book, her Audible book, when I was back in Michigan, on the fence about moving to Florida, selling my house, all the things, that book was in my ear, and I was walking the dog, and she said, "You accept the ebb with the flow." And that's when I went back to my home, cleaned every room, took pictures, put my house on the market and wow. get this. We closed on 22-22. Oh, that's cool. Nice. I did a quantum <laughs> leap and moved myself yeah. to Florida and my soul said, thank you. And change. It's, yeah. It's been good. But um, to be, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're awesome. You're amazing. I'm really That's excited great. to share your episode and your books and everything you're doing. And uh, it's it's just fabulous. We're going to put all your links in the show notes. And um, perhaps with my women's network community, you'll show up as a special guest because I'm creating sure. a women's network community. Oh, nice. or perhaps you want to join, you'll you know decide. Sure. Um, yeah, we start in August and it's going to be all powerful okay. women that... Um, our healers that we're all powerful. You know, I just got back yeah. from retreat. And when you get all these women in the room, the energy is just, Oh yeah. Yeah. And supporting each other, you know, and, and our endeavors, liking our stuff, following each other on social media, you know, other people, I think, um, sometimes I think we get competitive and, and we, we can, when you help others grow, then you're going to have success. So it's all about supporting women to be, uh, I'm all about that. Definitely.
Yeah, because we're we are, you know, Sarah was on my show. It's she she says we're we're pit against each other. And it's yeah. all like earlier you were talking about judgment and all that. It's all separation. And that's we're all one, we're all connected. You're me, I'm you. And we even talked about we're mirrors right now. Yeah, but, yeah I know. Right? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like listening to you and we are. When I help you, you're I'm helping myself. Yeah. And I try to convey this to people. My son actually taught me this. Oh, that's cool. There's anything you see in someone else that you don't like, something about yourself that you don't like. Yeah, it's, it's reflection. Um, and people tend to reflect their stuff onto uh, empaths, you know, because, and then they'll put, they'll, well, think, why don't they like us? Or, or they'll, they'll get uncomfortable with us or, or things, but it's because they're just seeing themselves, something about themselves and us. And we be, you know, we're like reflectors kind of uh, sometimes. And I just know it's nothing that I've done. You know, I had to get okay with people not liking me. That was hard for me because I always wanted people. I always felt most people liked me and I liked that. And I want to you know, be at peace. And, but some people aren't, aren't, aren't going to like me. And I had to accept that as I got older, that it's hard to believe that somebody wouldn't like you, Carmen. Oh, I got but, some enemy, believe me. But, <laughs> but, but you know, because <laughs> you're just so sweet but but the thing is the best restaurant somebody's not gonna like it the best movie somebody's not gonna like it we can't be people pleasers it doesn't That's right. anybody and you know and we're not the leaders that we are worrying what everybody thinks because you're not going to show up if you're afraid what people think you know we just have to be yeah. here and rem i was listening to gabby bernstein podcast earlier today and honestly when there's fear about showing up or putting your book out there or doing something, yeah. think of who you're serving, who needs to hear from you, that person. That's what we think about, not us. Yes. Yes. That's so true. Cause I, you know, I, I'm a little behind the scenes. I'm a little shy and I was putting myself out there, you know, after I got the first book published, um, it was hard. And, you know, now I'm kind of out there and, and then even so much. So there were, there was a time where my first book, my own family didn't know I published a book because I didn't, I didn't post on my personal Facebook page and they, and I didn't share, you know, Hey, I write astrology. They didn't even know I did astrology. And one of my cousins is like, how did you not tell us, you know, like a couple second cousins that you wrote a book, like they were all excited. And I found out they kind of believed in astrology. They liked it. And so, but I kept it kind of secret, you know, um, and that, we're afraid of judgment. It's the judgment and, and people do, and, and they don't understand it. And I've been unfriended. I've been blocked. I mean, for being me and, you know, that's fine because the right people that find us are meant to find us. And, and, and I, and I know the people that I'm meant to help, I was meant to help them for whatever reason. So now I'm posting on my, my uh, normal page more, not like too much. I usually do that on my business pages, but I am posting a little bit more on my personal page. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? Oh, well, if they want to unfriend me, that's fine. I don't really care. Well, because yeah. And I'll tell you what else that was super valuable is there was a realtor coach, a realtor, very, 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 very successful and very, very attractive woman. And she would use social media all the time and had huge following. She worked for EXP and she had this huge yeah. people. She's making money left and right and, and, and all the things. And yeah. she went on stage and she had her phone. I don't have it with me, but she had the phone because I put it on to do not just disturb over there because I didn't want any distraction from <laughs> our interview. But she, she holds the phone here and she goes, you see this? She's like talking about how if you have one of these, you can make money because you yeah. can show up with it. And she basically said, until you're putting money in my bank account, I don't care what you think until yeah. you're putting money in my yeah. bank account. So yeah. I thought that was so powerful, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know, yeah. people are going to judge and, and, and say things. And it's like, we cannot care what other people think as much as we want to be liked and all the things it's like, I'm so over it. I just went through a course with Kathy Heller and she talked about it and she just said, you know, not everybody's going to like the movie, the restaurant. There's always going to be somebody who doesn't like it and you just can't care. So yeah. even, criticism, even accepting criticism is hard for, I think, Virgos and Virgo moons, you know, because we we're critical of ourselves already. We already know our faults, right? And 
And so when someone points it out, it, it does, I, 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 I got to work on that. I mean, you know, we yeah. all aren't, we're no one's perfect. We all, you know, we make mistakes and, yeah. and nothing, no, I just told people, no, you know, nothing that I do is deliberate to hurt anyone. I mean, there were times where maybe I missed an email and I literally didn't see it because I was just so busy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'd get a nasty gram, you know, you never wrote me back and you don't care all about your, you know, yeah. just real negative. And I'm like, it wasn't intentional. I am so sorry. You know what I mean? But it don't matter. You can do everything perfect and be kind and do and bend over backwards yeah. and get some shirt off your back. And they still won't like you. And so, you know what? You just got to do what you got to do. You got to be nothing to do with you is what it is. That's the four agreements book. Yes, and that's the it. way you live your life. And that's the peaceful way to live is that when someone doesn't respond to me, it has nothing to do with me either. So that's a huge thing. And when you were saying, um, I just want to, this is just a very powerful learning moment for everybody because, um, with with the showing up and afraid of what other people think what it really you said it you said it's self-judgment it's really looking at the post and it's your own judgment that's causing you to have the issue and when I was putting out my coaching last year I didn't feel confident in myself and when I put the post out nobody liked it yeah. And I posted the other day and I had 11 likes on me of offering private coaching on my Facebook professional oh, page, nice. not Linda Brand Homes, my Linda Brand. And I looked at that and I sent it, I screenshot it to my son. I don't care. I'm totally off. And I said, that says a lot. Yeah. It's my energy yes. when I'm putting it out there. If I don't feel good about it, nobody else is going to feel good. Exactly. Exactly. But when you feel good about it. But anyway, that's my my thing. I but gotcha. anything else you want to share? Sorry for all that. Um, I have to. <laughs> yeah, if, if you want to visit my website, uh, www.carmenturnershot.com. S-C-H-O-T-T. -T, and we're yeah. going to have the links in the show notes. Good. Yeah, go on there and, and you can see all my books. Uh, all my books are on amazon.com. All of them. If you, you know, just uh, search me on Amazon, Carmen Turner Shot, and all my books will come up. So and fun. if you go to if you go to my website, there's a, I have a free gift on the homepage uh, that you can email me and I'll send you a birth will and report for fun. That's and so fun. just a little taste to let you know so what it's fun. like. I mean, All of it is so fun. Yeah. Cause I was thinking human design and I needed a human design reading, but it's like, this is like, this is the real deal. I mean, human design, like you said, the energy, but um, yeah, I mean, this is awesome. So so for, you said like 150, you get for an hour, yeah. 200. Yeah, you get an hour I record and uh, and then I send you uh, like your reports and like a so transit. you're on a Zoom together recorded? Yeah, oh. yeah I do Zoom and um, I used to just do, sometimes I can record. Some people don't want to do live sessions and that's fine. Um, and so I just record it and then I send them the MP3. And then uh, most of the time, though, I like to see someone like this and be on uh, the video with them. And because don't they ask questions and stuff? Uh, they they email me questions. Yeah. For okay. a, many years, I just did it that way where people would find me. They email me their questions, their birth info. I just record for an hour or 90 minutes, send it to them. And then if something else came up, they'd email me. But usually everything's answered and, and they've liked it that way. But now I'm doing live. And then some people I noticed, they're like, can you record? I'm like, sure, sure. You know, they, they may not, you know, want to get live, which is fine. Cause yeah. I got international clients. I got people from all over the world. I bet you're it's amazing. Fun, yeah. fun, I fun. And I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it too. And then you keep learning more and more like Reiki and, you know, you oh, say, you're always there's always Reiki. something to learn. I, I love to take classes and learn new things, you know, and even with astrology, I mean, I'm I, I'm not the master. I mean, every astrologer, even seasoned ones, are still learning stuff. I mean, it's so much with astrology. It's a lifelong learning. I mean, it really that's is. A lot. It's, it's a lot. That's why I love it. You never get bored. I mean, yeah. you, you can always find something else to master or study in it, and that you didn't know. So that's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Awesome. I'm so glad we connected. Yeah. If you ever want to do a live on Instagram or something, I'd love oh, yeah. to do it. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, let me know. And 
we could do, you know, let people ask some questions, Q&A about their sun sign or, you know, stuff like that. So fun. Um, I've done that before. It's fun. I'm going live on the Friday, the 7th with um, my hypnotist. She was on my show, Penny oh Chase, and she's a hypnotist, former nurse anesthetist, hypnotist, oh, nice. spiritual leader, coach. Yeah. So I love doing that. It's a lot of fun if you'd like to do it. I think it does something with the, you know, algorithms and sure. Definitely. But yeah, this was beautiful. Thank you, Carmen. I'm going to be you. in touch with you and stay connected because I just love it. I love your energy and all that you're doing. So cool. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. You too. So nice to meet you. Yes. Thank you.